on the 13th of February, Kingdom Come Deliverance will grace our PCs, Xbox Ones and PS4s alike. And this is a very highly anticipated medieval game. Not only is this the first open world first person historically accurate medieval simulation that we're getting at least for living memory in my case but this is a game that has been hyped over many other games of the genre such as Mountain Blade 2, Bannerlord or the new Total War games. The Kingdom Come Deliverance is something that has come out of the dark and has pushed its way to the top. But being one of the very lucky few people that have actually got the chance to play this before its release, I think it is my job to come here and tell you today, a month before the release, is Kingdom Come Deliverance worth your money? Should you buy this game when it comes out? So sit back, relax and enjoy my thoughts on Kingdom Come Deliverance and whether you should buy the game. First off, I might quite add that I have not played the fourth thing. I've been doing a walkthrough on my channel that I hopefully should get finished by the release date. If you want to go and check that out, go and look on the playlist on my channel and click Kingdom Come Deliverance and you will find it there. I have played from the start of the beta, which is I think it's either a third or halfway through the main storyline of the Kingdom Come Deliverance whole thing, which means that I'm not going to get the full experience of start to finish, but once the game is released, I'll be playing it then. Let's start on graphics though. This is a point of a game that is rather indecisive, a very polarizing suspect on new and upcoming games. Many people are on one side saying graphics need to be great, it needs to immerse you in the story, but on the other hand, graphics don't matter. Many people don't care about the graphics and they say that gameplay is on the forefront of what they want in their new games coming out in the future. But whether you think graphics are important or not, I think it's safe to say that Kingdom Come Deliverance needs this high quality fidelity. It needs the historical realism and simulation. In order to do that, the graphics need to be of a standard that immerse you in the world. Not only does it need to have this good gameplay mechanic, but it needs to go hand in hand with looking visually pleasing. And this is no more important than in Kingdom Come Deliverance. You may be able to have this amazing gameplay and this really nice storyline, but if you don't feel immersed, if you don't have good graphics or sound design, it's not going to have the same experience. The way everything is created in Kingdom Come Deliverance is in the finest details. May it be from a flickering flame reflecting on the lake in a small village, people running outside in the rain trying to get home. Or may it be the small water irrigations running through the middle of a pound that then fill up when the rain comes down. I think these are awesome small touches that add in the attention to detail of the game, which therefore adds in immersion. The sound design is on point as well. May it be your horse just going through the countryside or going through a forest at night, hearing the shikada sounds every which way it really feels like you're in this medieval land. This can also not just be for the beauty of the game, this can also get other emotions in there. The spookiness of me riding through a forest that I know is ridden with bandits, going to try and scout out this bandit camp, riding through the small paths, really does keep you on edge as no music is playing at this point. It's keeping you immersed in the game and all you can hear is your own thoughts and the clopping of your horse's hooves. Maybe a rustle in the bushes every now and then will keep you on edge, but then finally you reach the opening and all of it was just in your imagination. At least I'll be a crossroads which is likely to be out in the clearing because I want to get out of this forest as soon as possible. This is horrible. It's so spooky. <laughs> Oh, I, I'm so scared that I'm going to be jumped out. Please, anyone here? I just want to find this bandit camp. Why did I take this mission up? It was such a stupid idea. Stupid, stupid. Crossroads. Oh, here we are. Carry on straight. The sounds and the visual work together to create a symphony of immersion in this RPG style first person medieval simulation, and it is awesome. I don't think there's a game that I've really experienced this amount of immersion, and trust me, I am not a single player guy. Anyone that knows me knows that single player games aren't my forte. I'm not one for sitting down and just playing on my own without anything to do, but I decided to give Kingdom Come Deliverance a go. Yes, I gave it a go about a year and a half actually, I was given the beta, 
but I gave it a go nonetheless, and oh my word, was I surprised. This is the first game that I've really been addicted to playing the single player of. May it be this whole story that is being told and being recorded and shown to you guys. It just really creates this feeling that I want to go and press on to the next quest. What might happen next? What character am I going to meet next? And this brings me on to the next point, storyline. As said at the beginning, the beta starts halfway or quarter of the way through the actual storyline, the main game itself. This means I can't tell you how the character development really is at the start to the end because I have no experience of that. All I know is what can come from each individual mission and the kind of emotions and the gameplay and how that feels just to play on their own rather than this whole long storyline strung together since I haven't experienced that. And I'll definitely bring out another video a few months after the release once I've experienced completed the whole game and decided what we think of how character development is and all that good stuff. But from what I have played, every mission is unique and it's all interesting. Even if there's no real action in it, it all builds up to certain set pieces. For example, there's been rumours of a bandit going around. And you have to find who this is, so you go to the village, you ask his father, which you will see in my let's play. Then he says that his son is hardly ever home, which of course arise suspicions. But he comes in sometimes to sell some of the illegally poached game meat, which then you go and talk to the innkeeper to see if he knows anything about it, and of course he does. Then you have to go and head down to the quarry, as the innkeeper states that some hideouts might be something to do with the mines, since that is somewhere the bandits often hide out. Then with the quarry master, he'll send you there, you find the bandit, and of course, you do some set pieces there. You do a bit of fighting when you get ambushed. Wait, is that spoilers? No, not really. Just go, just go and watch my videos. You'll like them, I hope. Or dislike them all, I don't care. Nonetheless, each little set piece is set up with numerous missions. Now, many people might think that going from one place to another just following this slower storyline seems a bit boring. But there's something about it that isn't, and I think I have put my finger on it. From hours and hours of playing it, I have worked out why these slower fetch missions or finding hunting missions are more satisfying than any other game I've played. And this is the world that has been built. It's a giant open world that has been built in medieval Europe. Like I said, graphics, sounds, the whole mechanics of the world as it dynamically flows just brings you into the immersion of the whole surroundings around you. So maybe yes, you're going on a 15 minute walk on your horse from one place of the map to the other. It might feel like or seem like a long way, but because you're so immersed in this world, everything is going on around you. People might be walking past you, they might mutter something as they walk past, or they might bump into you and they might go, oi, or shout at you or something like that. Or you might hear some birds or rustling in the trees or something like that. Or even when I was just walking along the path, there was a man swigging from a branch, hanging there. And that was something that then tied into the story later on. That turned out to be one of the bandit's friends that was hanged earlier on. So overall the storyline is immersive and I think it is safe to say damn right addictive. No matter if you're into single player games or you hate single player games, this is a story that is unlike no other. It might be comparable to things like Skyrim, yet with this historically accurate setting, it makes it just so much more immersive and feel like you're in a real world rather than playing in a fantasy world. Now it takes me on to combat, and this is where the game I think has a few issues that I'm going to talk about. Many people have said that the combat looks a bit dodgy, and it does play a little bit dodgy. In my let's play, I'm playing with a controller. Now, I feel like this is the easiest way for me to play because this combat style doesn't take a whole ton of skill with it. There's only a few set ways. Now, something that I'm not too keen on is lock-on combat. Many people might not understand what lock-on combat is, but it's exactly the opposite to a game like Mountain Blade, where you don't just go in slashing and then they have to block it and which way and things like that. Lock on combat is you find someone, you target them and your character then locks onto them. That You're then in kind of a 1v1 duel with them and of course then you can do the different attack movements, the different blocks and all that good stuff. But lock on combat can have its issues. As seen in my bandit let's play, I was going through, I found the bandits, I had to team up with one of them and I went to hit the enemy. But then the camera swerved and locked onto my friend and I hit him and he ended up dying. Which is a bit painful and a bit of a shame and a little bit awkward for when I had to tell his mum. But nonetheless, combat is something that really needs improving. How could they improve this, you ask? Well, here's how I think it could be done. 
I know that lock-on combat has to stay. That's a mechanic that they've obviously chosen to do and that they're just going to have to stick with and improve now, but I feel like it could be a bit less stiff than it has been. Of course, I've been playing the beta, which I might add, I need to just stress this. This, this beta was from over a year and a half ago. Everything is going to change. All the little bugs and things probably most likely won't be in it on release. But in terms of lock on combat, I feel like it needs to be a bit smoother the way it happens. You don't just walk up to someone and then suddenly you jaggedly swipe into position and then the duel takes place. I feel like it needs to be a very fluid transition in it. But once you're in this duel type combat, it feels quite nice. The blocking is very satisfying, although I had to say hitting someone it feels like you're just hitting them with a wooden sword, which sounds a little bit weird, but I'm sure the sounds of things are just placeholders that, as I've stated numerous times in the past. Something quickly that I think I should touch on, but I'm not going to stay on it for very long, is optimization. Now, optimization is how well a game plays, for any of you that don't know. Kingdom Come Deliverance plays horrifically. Yes. It's optimized very bad. In this early beta stage with my GTX 1080 Ti and i7 7700K overclocked both of them, it can't really go above 40 FPS and mostly can't really go above 30 FPS. Now this is on the high settings, but it should be able to absolutely smash those settings. And I might add, I haven't got my 4K monitor, so I'm still playing on 1080p at the moment. So that kind of FPS is absolutely horrendous. But the reason I'm not staying on this for long is because it doesn't matter at this stage. This, like I've said about 50 stupid times, this is an early beta version from a long, long time ago. I've heard that optimization has been improved greatly in the development team, and that is something we don't really need to worry about. So if that's going to put you off on buying the game, don't bother. It will be greatly improved when it comes out, and if you're worried about optimization, get it on PS4 or Xbox One. It'll be optimized for those consoles, and you won't have to worry about changing settings to get it to run extremely smoothly over 60 FPS because it will be done for you. That is the beauty of consoles, it is simple. Yes, you might not look anywhere near as good as it could of a PC of high standards, but if you just want a smart, simple, nice, decent looking game that runs fairly well, get it on consoles instead. But nonetheless, do not think about optimization when you're pre-ordering this game or buying this game because it's just not worth it. What I definitely recommend is you see how well it runs on other people's PCs before purchasing it yourself if you don't have a very high-end PC because this game is going to take quite a bit of juice if I'm going to be completely honest with you. Now, what could be improved? I see a lot of comments on my Let's Play videos of it, my walkthrough of this game. Oh, the animations look terrible. The voice acting is horrendous. And no matter how many comments I leave saying that this is placeholder animations and talking and things like that, people don't seem to understand that. You can't take the gameplay that I've put on my channel so far as the literal exact final ending for it. No matter how many times that I tell you that this version is from years ago, people don't understand that that is not going to be the final product. So a final conclusion that I give to this video for you guys, whether you are thinking of buying it or not, is if you have a PC that can run it, if you have a high-end PC, go ahead, get it straight away. If this is the game that you really are looking forward to and confident, then do it. But if not, if you are unsure, even slightly unsure, wait a day or two, wait a week or so, you don't have to buy a game on the release date. That is the beauty of PC gaming. It's there for pretty much forever. Once this game is released, you'll have all the time you want, whether you decide to buy it or not. From my point of view, I am getting it instantly. This is a game that I absolutely love, and we've never really experienced something much like it. And I can't wait to get my hands on the full story. But if you're not sure, just stick around the channel. I'm going to be doing a whole walkthrough from the start to finish of this game, multiple reviews and different off-brand videos of this game, so don't you guys worry. Tips and tricks videos will be coming as well, some cool tutorials on the game, I can't wait to get them done because I really need to learn how to get money and once I've done that, I'm going to be telling you because money is something that's really annoying me in the game. <laughs> God, I'm so poor. 
But nonetheless, guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Are you going to buy it straight away, or are you going to wait a little bit, or are you just going to steer clear of this game? Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Now, if this video can get 1,000 likes, I'm going to be bringing out two, yes, I mean two, Kingdom Come Deliverance Let's Play videos in one night this week, which I know you guys love those videos, so I'm going to do them straight away. But of course, the video needs to get to 1,000 likes before I can do that, because they take a lot of time to record. <laughs> a lot of effort to edit so that is what's going to be happen in the later and upcoming few days but other than that guys i will see you in the next one <laughs>